Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, I actually did put up a collage, I call it. Uh, I may have misspelled it, but anyway. Um, still very much an amateur as far as I can know, video editing and stuff of that nature. Anyways, I put a collage, as it were, uh, on the... I tried to put it in the feature section, but I guess I didn't, I didn't accomplish that. Anyway. Anyway, uh, so... I'll put one up uh, as, as a collective, uh, it's a collection, excuse me, a collection of all the Fed chairs talking about uh, either quote unquote burning money and it not being taxpayer dollars, you know, like uh, Brent Bernanke's uh, 60 minute uh, interview saying there's not taxpayer money that, that went to bail out of the banks. It was uh, them digitally print, uh, putting money into his accounts, that sort of thing. Same thing with, uh, with uh, Powell. Uh, two things of Alan Greenspan saying pretty much the same thing except about the digital part. But anyway, I'll let you uh, go ahead and hopefully enjoy that. Um, anyway, so continuing on to uh to today um uh this is from taxresearch.org.uk and uh what the heck is the guy's name uh richard murphy uh he's an addition column mmt here in uh in, in uh the uk uh but here's a, a article they put up but there's two of them and these are short ones so that's why i'm able to put two in one uh, what happens when most households in the UK have run out of money by the end of the month, which may happen within the year? And as you can see, it's from today, so there you go. Uh, Hard Greaves lands down. The financial service company issued a press release yesterday saying, where the cost of living uh, crisis is hitting the hardest. Right now, across the UK, only half of people have enough money left at the end of the month. In 12 months' time, the, in most areas, this will fall to around 1 in 10. Every single part of the, of the country will see at least a 30% drop, uh, 30 percentage point drop, excuse me, uh, in a year's time. The areas where fewest people have enough money left at the end of the month will be Yorkshire and Humber, which will be 6.7, the Northeast at 7%, Wales at 8.1, and the East Midlands 8.7, and the West Midlands at 9.2. Over the next 12 months, the percentage of people with enough emergency savings will drop from 62 to 57. In the Northeast, the percentage will, with enough savings, will fall more than uh, anywhere else to the lowest level in the country down 7% percentage points to 44%. Figure from, uh, figures from the HL Savings and Resilience uh, Barometer produced with Oxford Economics and released in July of this year. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm not sure Hargreaver, Hargreaves lands down has much to gain directly from research. I am presuming it was undertaken uh, in good faith and that the findings are realistic. I have no reason to think otherwise. Now, to say we are not facing uh, a cost of living crisis and note that every, and even the Labor Party are saying that despite the disbalancing, the government's books is much more important than helping people by using government deficit funding. We, uh, we really are in deep, deep trouble. Uh, let's try to pause it, but never mind. Uh, is it still? No, it's okay. Okay, so this is from again. The uh, labor is offering us austerity, recession, and economic failure as his new economic policy. So basically, conservatives. Labor shadow chancellor Rachel Reeves is to make a speech at the Res Resolution Foundation today. Uh, and this is the Guardian. Guardian. Uh, Reeves will say a labor government will stick to fiscal rules that would include a promise uh, to only borrow to invest while committing to reducing the national debt as a share of the economy. A shadow chancellor will tell an event hosted by the Resolution Foundation think tank in London, I have set out the fiscal rules which will bind the next labor government. 
rules which I will stick to with uh, ironclad discipline. So if we had another 2008 Reeves would not save the economy as tax revenue crashed, she'd trash the public service instead, co-signing us to total economic meltdown. And if we had enough, co uh, if we had another COVID, she would not supply help to the NIH, NIH to us here, uh, NHS or businesses and people in practice, she'd let people die and allow the economic, the economy rather to fall instead. And nor will she try to manage the economy to counter the cyclical failings of the market. She will instead seek to ex exacerbate them by cutting spending to suit falling revenues. I am not making this up. That's what her ironclad discipline implies. This is a pure neoliberal playbook and it is utterly, totally economically illiterate. It is also grossly irresponsible and promises complete neglect of duty to, uh, neglect of duty to the people of this country whilst offering total services to the city of London. I know I talk about the fact that people should vote anything, uh, sh should vote any, uh, anything but conservative to beat fascism, but I am glad that in my case that will uh, mean voting the Lib Dev, Dev as it will be very hard to vote for this. I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. Anyone and uh, we are uh, back over progressives. Uh, Roe v. Wade negative impact beyond abortion. Uh, this is by a let's see, this is by Artemis Douglas, uh, really good author, uh, author, author, author. Uh, should check out more of her stuff anyway. Okay, so it starts off, yes, 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 is, it's that bad. And, and the Supreme Court ruling on July, July, man, uh, June 24th of this year that overturned the once long-standing pre uh, president of uh, the Roe v. Wade ruling Justice Thomas expressed desire and intent the court to revisit and overturn uh, Lawrence's decision as well as the uh, over, what was that, over, Obergefell and Griswold rulings. Uh, Lawrence is popularly, popularly known as the signing that legalized gay intimacy in the United States. However, Lawrence affects far more than the legal um, ability for privacy in a bedroom. It, it also nullified any sort of sodomy law without Lawrence, uh, state legislators would have an unrestricted pathway to create or restore legislation illegalizing intimacy. Without Oberg Obergefell, same-sex marriage would be criminalized again, and without uh, Griswold, contraceptives would be legally restricted and the people who use them criminalized. To understand how far this could and likely will go, we must look at the policy action and <clears throat> excuse me policy actions of the current leaders of the prevailing uh, Christo uh, Christo fascist movement within the United States. The National Right to Life Committee, a right wing grassroots and reactionary organization, published uh, on January uh, man. June 15, 2022, model legislation within the, the purpose of, in their words, with, oops, with this model law, we are laying out a roadmap for the right to life movement so that in post Roe society, we can protect many mothers and their children from the tragedy of abortion. Carol De 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 Tobias, president of NRLC. Uh, this model legislation is uh, in its included introduction text provide a blueprint for the worst of Christian fascism and to metal, uh, meld with the worst of the model surveillance uh, state, modern surveillance state. 
and metal as well. Um, these reactionaries describe that there are two major parts to legislation to unborn life. Their, static, their stated goals go beyond legally restricting abortion in their own words. There are two major parts to legislation to protect unborn life. First is the substantive part, which abortions would, will be prohibited by the law and which abortions will be allowed and under what conditions. We recommend prohibiting abortion except to prevent the death of pregnant women, which has been the, accept, uh, been the accepted policy choice by the pro-life movement since 73 and for many years before. The second part is an effective enforcement regime. Traditionally, abort, uh, abortion laws relied on criminal enforcement to make pro-life laws effective in protecting unborn life. However, current realities require a much more robust, robust uh, enforcement regime that just rely that just re, uh, reliance on criminal penalties. The proposed legislation or legislative model goes on to discuss how Democrats, Antifa, and BLM, as referenced by the NRLC, would prevent traditional criminal enforcement, so a RICO-like prosecution structure would be necessary to enforce newly legal valid restrictions on bodily autonomy and the right to choose. This model is extensive and, th and thorough. It would ban short, oh, sorry, ban abort, uh, abortif abortifacients and any sales, production, or distribution of them. There are medicines that are abortifacients. Many are potentially, uh, potentially all of them are also used for other treatments. There are chemicals and herbs that, if used in a certain ways, will or without, uh, with or without intention, can act as an abort efficient. It would involve felony charges for anyone involved in the decision to abort, from medical provider to internet po uh, poster, uh, to a family member or a friend. Literally anyone they can say helped cause the abortion would be charged with a felony offense and subject to civil penalties. This model also legally defines the beginning of protected life as fertilization and fertilization as the time when the penetration of a male human sperm into a zona, um, into a zona pellicide occurs. <clears throat> For those who are unaware, the zone pellicidia, uh, pellicida is a membrane found outside the ovum or egg in mammals Step one, two, or three of fertilization, as shown below, could be argued to be penetration of male human sperm into a zona pellicida. Very thorough. Uh, see, this is from the Encyclopedia Britannica, Events of Fertilization. Essentially, this model outlook, outlaws, excuse me, standard, um, Medical care for women and people at the time of conception is physically possible. It also makes it clear that aiding and abetting an abortion would include things like hosting uh, web content that helps someone figure uh, out how to get an abortion or posting something affirming the right to choose, aka influencing. Think about, oops, think about this for a second. How would they know who posted and what we post and what was posted? How would authorities know uh, who provided what medication or information or procedures or other durable uh, assistance? This model, the model of the prevailing homegrown forced birth movement in the United States, relies heavily on non-existent right to privacy and the already built infrastructure for total and unwavering digital surveillance. By proudly and directly announcing the desire to create such a robustly restricted definition of reproductive rights, as well as enforcement and regulatory infrastructure to guarantee 
this de uh, definition is followed by oops followed they are also announcing an indirect indirectly spoken desire to criminalize all sex intimacy as well as mar uh, marriage and uh, relationships that do not facilitate this incredible regressive and narrow definition of our productive rights and purpose the overturning of roe v wade already gutted the right to privacy in the united states roe v wade wasn't merely about the right to abortion it had protected the greater right to provide privacy it is this right to privacy that protected and made room for the right to abortion the Christian extremists are ready to move to take every uh, and take advantage of that, and they willed enough institutional power to do so. Okay, so this is from Shy apparently. Roe v. Wade is not just an abortion case; it's a privacy case. This is bad for both for, for more reasons than the media has been highlighting. How exactly do state governments intend to find out you and find out you got an abortion? How will they know you're pregnant in the first place? As for the threat of returning Lawrence and Oberg, uh, Obergfell, it and or when they do uh, when they choose when those choose excuse me Jesus. When those two rulings are overturned by the court, it's not just a gay marriage that is nullified. Uh, any form of sex or intimacy that is not between legally married, fertile, uh, perisex, uh, cisgender, heterosexual man, uh, man and fertile uh, parasil, uh, parasex, uh, cisgender, heterosexual woman, woman there we go. Easy for me to say, with the express purpose and intent of uh, reproduction and with a form other than PIV, sex could and likely will become criminal. Uh, criminal. PIV is a term for sexual intercourse involving penetra penetrative sex using a penis and vagina. Okay, so basically it's the two and doing the same. The legal uh, mechanism by which this would be done and has been done in the past pre-Lawrence is so-called anti-sodomy legislation. You are 14 times more likely to die during pregnancy than from an abortion, and the number one cause of death during pregnancy is murder. Overturning Roe is implicitly act, is an implicit act of fe uh, femicity. Overturning or V. Wade uh, is a pretext for institution, uh, inst instituting harsher conditions. It is also a direct act of femicide. 2% of all pregnancies are uh, ectopic. This means without the right to choose, the right to, uh, uh, to abortion, and comprehensive access to safe and reliable health care. Uh, one in 50 people who get pregnant will die before the pregnancy comes to term. It will will and so will the fetus fetuses it is important to weigh any popular sentiment against facts and evidence in this case these are several uh, these are several rele uh, relevant facts disproving the popular uh, sentiment that democrats would protect the rights to privacy and abortion if they could democrats have complete uh, complete par uh, partisan control of legislative and executive branches of government at the at the federal level. There have been several historic historical points since the 19, since 1973 Roe v. Wade decision when Democrats stole enough votes to codify its protection into federal law. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln and Congress. Will they ignore the, uh, the Supreme Court's ruling in Dred's, Dred Scott versus Sanford by acting legislatively and ex uh, executively to ignore the court's ruling that black people were not and could not be considered humans or citizens within the United States and therefore had and could have th had no rights? They effectively created the institutional pathways for emancipation of slaves and the 13th Amendment. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, the Democrats currently hold enough votes with with VP uh, uh, Kamala Harris as tiebreaker in the Senate to end the filibuster and pass any le- any agenda that the party decides to agree on. With two months of warning, Democrats' only major uh, political action was to put the weight of their establishment behind anti-choice Democrat uh, Henry Collier in a primary. He later won against the pro-choice candidate by 289 uh, votes. Remember, the draft decision to overturn Roe v. Wade was leaked. Biden uh, has vast executive powers, the ear of all mainstream media, the direct support and endorsement of liberal media, and the most powerful bully pulpit in the world. He could easily whip the party and its rogue members, also known as rotating villains, are towards a shared agenda. President Obama promised to sign the Freedom of Act or Freedom of Choice Act legislation that would have federally codified the prosecutions, or I'm sorry, protections, not prosecutions, my fault, protections of Roe v. Wade as law rather than ju- uh, judicial presidents as the first thing I do as president, but chose not to once actually elected. Let's see. Abortion in the U.S. If Roe is overturned, attracting state laws. Okay. Da, da. But even as Mr. Obama has high delighted abortion rights advocates, he has dialed back some earlier ambitions. In 2007, he promised uh, Planned Parenthood that the first thing I do as president would be to sign the Freedom of Choice Act, which effectively codifies Roe v. Wade. Now he says the bill is not my highest legislative priority as he put it at a recent news conference. These facts behind, uh, combined to reveal a simpler truth. Democrats don't care about the rights of millions of women and people around the, around the oh, sorry, across the entire country. The Democrats do not care about the right to abortion. If they did, they would, ha- they would act and use their powers as the power Democrats had hold currently is enough to do so. Let us remember that Biden was chiefly responsible for the confirmation of Clarence Thomas to the court in the first place. Then Senator Biden led the committee responsible for Thomas confirmation hearings and Biden speared (coughs) any chance of Thomas not being confirmed by railroading a ostracized Anita Hill. Let's see. There is Griswold, contraception, Lawrence, same-sex relationships. Uh, Obergefell, uh, marriage equality. It does not end an abortion. The Republicans will not uh, stop until they have stripped away every freedom they ha- they can't load with, them bu- with bullets. And a categorically false to define, oh wait, it is categorically kind of false to define or state that these moves by the Supreme Court are about religious freedom. In fact, they are uh, they are about religious oppression and domination. Uh, not yet. Not every sect of Christianity is against abortion. For example, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day, of Latter-day Saints, commonly referred to as Mormons, follow a church doctrine that expresses expressly states. Abortion is a mother's choice. While the church advises that abortion be a last resort, it does not take any formal stance on limiting the right to choose. This means that the religious freedom of the Mormons require Roe v. Wade or another legal and institutional framework guaranteeing the right to choose the right to abortion and the right to access comprehensive and safe medical care. The church teaches its members that even these rare exceptions do not justify abortion automatically. Abortion is a most serious matter and should be considered only after the people involved have consulted with other with their church and local church leaders and feel and feel through a personal prayer that their decision is correct. The church has not favored or opposed legislative purposes or public uh, demonstrations of concerning abortion in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, abortion public uh, policy page. In the wake of the death of Roe 
the church uh, updated its policy uh, public public uh, no, public policy page to include the sentence towards the end. The church's position on this matter remains unchanged. Okay, so abortion. The Church of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is the actual like copy of what they said. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believes in the sanctity of human life, and therefore the Church opposes uh, elective abortion for personal or social convenience and counsels its members not to sub uh, submit to perform, encourage, pay for, or arrange for such abortions. The Church allows for a possible exceptions for as members when pregnancy results from rape or incest or a competent physician determines that the life or health of the mother is in serious jeopardy or a competent physician determines that the fetus has a severe de uh, defects that will not allow the baby to survive be uh, beyond birth. The church uh, teaches its members that even these rare exceptions do not justify abortions automatically Abortion is a most serious matter and should be considered only after the uh, personal involvement I have consulted with their persons involved, excuse me, have consulted with their local church leaders and feel, uh, feel through personal prayer that their decision is correct. Um, the church has not favored or opposed legislative uh, purposes, proposals, excuse me, or public demonstrations earning, earning concerning abortion. Okay, that was, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Beyond Christianity, whoever religious beliefs range from allowing abortion to it, ex uh, expressly uh, expecting it to, to determine circumstances for Jews who can get pregnant, there is, who can get pregnant, there is a religious and cultural right to have an abortion. Legally restricting the ability, the right to choose is legally, uh, the, um, legally, Express, uh, oppressive against the rights of Jews related to religious expression. As for Muslims, leading practitioners of Islam, the faith leaders, as we call them uh, in Americanized Christians, Christian terms, respect women too much to issue a formal stance or doctrine for, uh, for or against abortion and leave it up to the individual women or person who is pregnant. For believers of Hinduism, abortion is not a wrong. Uh, it is not wrong. All three of these major faiths, and many and many others, are now subject to religious discrimination and oppression in the United States. Yet, yeah, last twenty some years, they have been. Uh, the court has expressed its intent using Justice Thomas as a mouthpiece. The court has expressed that the Griswold, Lawrence, and uh, Obergefell decisions are all next. For the reason in future uh, cases, we should reconsider all of this, uh, all this course substantive due process proceedings, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell, uh, because any substantive due process decision is demonstrably erone erroneous. We have a duty to, co to correct the error established in those proceedings. Justice Thomas, uh, his, actually him, him being confirmed is he is erroneous. erroneous. Anyway, so let's see, uh, Clar uh, Clarence Thomas, this is from Mark Joseph Stern, uh, Clarence Thomas concurring expl explicitly calls on the Supreme Court to overturn Griswold, right to con contraception, Lawrence, right to same-sex intimacy, and Obergefell, right to same-sex marriage. Roe v. Wade wasn't the end goal. It was the first step in accelerating a decades-long political project to reclaim, entrench, and enshrine the goals of the mainstream Christian right. Legal recognition of the right to privacy, Roe v. Wade, the right to contraception, and medical choice, Griswold, the uh, right to same-sex intimacy, Lawrence, and the right to same-sex marriage, Obergefell, stand in the way of those goals. Those goals include making women fully obser uh, observant for, for men, uh, exterminating all forms of uh, queerness, and restoring segregation and ultimately slavery. Each step along with path will require capa uh, capacity for enforcement. In order to effectively enforce the fascist you know, horrors, the ruling class must also effectively 
utilize a lack of privacy and ever deepening surveillance uh, to know who is breaking the law. When you suggest that if they would go back to slavery, that Clarence Thompson himself, being African American, uh, would not be allowed to serve on the Supreme Court. I would suspect, anyway. So effectively, either he's uh, showing proof that he's dying or that he just no longer wants to be on the Supreme Court and doesn't want anybody else, African American, otherwise to be on the Supreme Court. Anyway, uh, let's see. By, by the way, that, that, that's just my thought process on that. I'm not sure. Yeah, obviously, I don't know. Uh, by eliminating the right to privacy, the court has paved the way for a complete and total surveillance state. The ruling class will, in, will use that surveillance state to further their interests as well as level. Of, let me see. Let's see if this is a video. And this is a video, so let's see what this has. Speaking of tactics, one thing that's become important to a lot of modern anarchists is praxis. Praxis means putting the theory into action, walking the walk, as well as just talking the talk. That's why a lot of anarchist groups put a focus on direct action, protest, and demonstration. But as you read modern anarchist writers, you'll find that they have an eye on how they can build the change they want to see in the world. There's an inseparable relationship between power and violence. Violence is much more than just being punched in the face. Like with power, there's lots of different kinds of violence. The Norwegian sociologist Johan Galtung says that violence is the force that limits people's options. PBS Idea Channel did a great video on violence a while ago in which Mike says that to inflict violence is to remove an agent's choice. We see the relationship between power and violence played out in politics. Some people say violence has no place in politics, but actually, violence occupies every place in politics. If you choose not to obey the laws of your country, sooner or later you will be confronted by the direct violence of the police and the structural violence of the penal system. Governments maintain their sovereignty against invasion and revolution with the direct violence of the armed services. Violence absolutely saturates politics. The entire point of a government is to distribute, manage, legitimize, and maintain a monopoly on violence. We'll be right back. And finally, I'll be doing, um, a uh, article by Tom Ramirez. Uh, I think he's one of the new ones uh, that, uh, at ripperquestions.org. Uh, support them, uh, uh, ripperquestions.org slash donate. Anyway, uh, Fed Chairman uh, Powell wants higher unemployment to stop inflation. I do believe, yes, he was, he was talking about that about two weeks ago or something like that. Anyway, so I guess it's a Twitter thread that uh, he compiled that Chairman Powell uh, has said. Uh, thread, uh, Twitter thread, uh, first consumer price index is 9.1% year over year. The Fed's solution is to raise interest rates, killing the economy to bring down a, th a thread for, uh, about establishment logic or uh, hashtag CPI 9.1%. Uh, two, Chairman Fed wants to raise unemployment and lower wages to fight inflation. Recession risk is a lower priority. This comes from marketplace.org. Uh, let me just kind of go there if I can. Uh, yes, Marketplace. Uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell, uh, whether we can execute a soft landing or not, it may actually depend on factors that we don't control. See, hopefully this won't have any like hiccups to it. Okay, so after steering the U.S. Uh, Central Bank through an unprecedented series of challenges from the pandemic, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and the Federal Open Market Committee, or FOMC, faced another critical test controlling the highest inflation in decades without tipping the uh, economy into recession. Last week, the Fed announced the biggest risk, uh, interest rate hike in 22 years and plans for reducing the Fed's nearly $9 trillion balance sheet. Remember, that's just them buying 
uh, mortgage-backed securities and other treasuries and bonds and stuff like that to put money into the economy or into the banking system, rather. Uh, I don't think that has inflation rest to it. Uh, I think that is more more like the um, supply chain uh, disruption in those countries getting back open and all that stuff. Anyway, last week, the Fed announced the biggest interest rate in 22 years. I just said that. Uh, we are... What we control can't control is demand. We can't really affect supply with our policies. Okay, so he's mentioned the fact that the only thing they can do or think they can do is just raise interest rates to stop the demand for like borrowing and so that, which never works. Powell's full marketplace host, Kay Rysdell, in an interview Thursday, uh, a supply is a, a and supply is a big part of the story here, but. More than that, there is a huge event, geopolitical events going on around the world that are going to play a very important role in the economy in the next year or so. So the question whether we can execute a soft landing or not, it may actually depend on factors that we don't control. Okay, so this will be a transcript of that part. I don't do for transcript, so you can go to the... Uh, the the link on the article. Go back to this. Uh, see number. Da, 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 da. Uh, but many sectors of the economy are not interest rate sensitive. Interest rates are a blunt tool for managing inflation. Let's go here. Okay. Why isn't investment more sensitive to interest rate evidence from surveys? Uh, the abstract is a fundamental tenant of traditional theories of investment and monetary policy transmission is that interest rates are a critical determinant of business investment expenditures. Yet a large body of uh, empirical research offers mixed evidence as be at best for substantial interest rate effects in uh, on investment. We examined the sensitivity of investment plans to interest rates based on surveys of CFOs during the recent uh, economic recovery. We find that most firms that claim their investment plans to be quite insensitive to decrease, uh, yeah, insensitive to decreases in interest rates and only somewhat more responsive to interest rate increases. CFOs most frequent cited either ample cash or the low level of interest rates as reasons for lack of sensitivity. In the, in the cross section, we find their insensitivity to interest rates changes and tends to be more pronounced among firms that do not indicate financial constraints as a top concern and firms with no near terms to borrow. Perhaps more surprisingly, interest is also uh, less interest rate sensitive at firms and uh, expecting higher year, uh, year ahead growth. These findings appear to be consistent with survey data on the hurdle rates firm firms report using to make, uh, uh, make despite investment decisions. The average reported hurdle rate has hovered near 15% for decades, despite the downward trend in market interest rates. Moreover, market interest rates, excuse me. Moreover, firms expected to grow more tend to have higher hurdle rates, suggesting a possible connection between interest rates and sensitivity and higher hurdle rates. There you go. Okay. It's, da, da, da. To affect the uh, economy, the Fed will have to move interest rates dramatically to crash a big enough market like housing, so contagion uh, spreads. Five, if builders start layoffs, workers buy less. With fewer customers, unrelated businesses will have to lay off the workers and cut prices too. And capitalism, everyone's spending is someone else's income. Our government's plan to create a deflationary spiral, inflation is defeated. Unfortunately, interest rate changes are the only politically viable solution when your constituents are billionaires and corporations. Also, rate hikes increase payments to, gov to government bondholders 
while year to date cost to three hundred billion. That new money creation is likely to increase wealth disparity. Better solutions would focus on government investment to supply scarce resources and taming monopolist pricing by corporations. Uh, yeah, by the way, these are also uh, obviously, just, as you can see, were numbered, which I kind of ignored. I didn't mean to, but I did. Uh, number 10, uh, smart government spending would seek to increase uh, productivity capacity where $1 invested returns two worth of stuff. This is taken for granted in business, but not in government spending. And that'll be it. And that will be all for the day. Now we go here. There we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, support rootprogressives.org uh, slash donate and support this channel by subscribing, sharing, commenting. Um, yeah, pretty much th those kind of things. Uh, learn MMT. Uh, learn more about it at rootprogressives.org. Uh, thanks for watching and peace out for now. Personal retirement accounts is, a, is another way of making a, a future retiree benefits more secure for their retirement. And also, do you believe that personal retirement accounts as a component to a system of solvency does help improve solvency? Because if, when you have a personal retirement account policy and it, it's accompanied with a benefit offset, with that feature in place, do you believe that personal retirement accounts can help us achieve solvency for the system and make those future retiree benefits more secure? Well, I, I wouldn't say that the your gold benefits are insecure in the sense that um, there's nothing to prevent the federal government from creating as much money as it wants and paying it to somebody. The question is, how do you set up a system which assures that the real assets are created which those benefits are employed to purchase?